What's really going on, Walt Disney? What's really going on? What are you protecting on this island? That's so f***ing good. There's something up they don't want people to know about. Richard McGuire, also known as Southern Pirate Outdoors, had just finished swimming for his life, escaping a seemingly inescapable situation. Surrounded by Disney's private security and Florida sheriffs, he hides in the brush off the shores of Bay Lake. He had just escaped Discovery Island. He called his girlfriend to give her the news, but would be shook to his core when he found out that the cops were one step ahead of him. Disney's Treasure Island, later renamed to Discovery Island, is located in Bay Lake in Orlando, Florida, just a short boat lick from the Magic Kingdom. When it first opened in 1974, Disney goers were in for a walk on the wild side as it would provide tourists and locals alike with an exotic getaway with lush vegetation and a different kind of wildlife than what people in Florida were used to. The popularity for the attraction and animals in general would dwindle throughout the 90s, and seeing as there was little to no profit in wildlife conservation of this magnitude, Mr. Mouse decided to be best to just bludgeon all the animals with a tire iron and close up for good in 1999. Now a shell of its former self left to rot, all of the original buildings and habitats remained on the island, withering away due to years of neglect and natural disasters. And yet, it remained heavily guarded, and certain people were desperate to know why. But in all honesty, no one was more desperate to uncover the secrets of Mickey's mysterious mass than a subsect of filmmakers on YouTube whose ears perk up like a nipple under cold breeze whenever they hear the word abandoned. Exploring the long deserted and documenting their experiences for people who are afraid of confrontation. Like you and me. I'm sorry for saying that. And for those urban explorers, abandoned theme parks are like their holy grail. Start exploring an amazing amusement park. Their white whale. Part of this theme park. Their Disney themed guck job. An abandoned theme park. The allure of a consumer wonderland that time forgot is just one that we're all naturally drawn to. Who can blame a man for wanting to see what's left? Or in this case, what was still worth guarding? Discovery Island had been explored by a few trailblazers, each trek more difficult than the last, as Disney would tighten security with each new breach. That was until Richard McGuire gave it a try, and Disney decided they had had enough. Go to Disney Discovery Island next week, and always be ready on your worst day. 7.26 p.m. Apocalypse. COVID-19. In 2020, the news broke of the goofy little green ball with Shrek horns tickling our insides. People began to panic, and as a result, many of the bustling attractions from Disneyland to would close their doors for the safety of the patrons. The Mouse House was emptier than a Cyanide Pills Anonymous meeting, but they were about to receive their first guest in months. Richard McGuire, aka Rip Thorne, aka Southern Pirate Outdoors, spends his time exploring abandoned locales and documenting dangerous wildlife. Growing up in Alabama, Richard had always wanted to go see Discovery Island for himself, but his dad always told him no, as spending $10 to go see some stupid birds is pointless when you could just look up and see them for free. So what better time to fulfill his lifelong dream than during a global pandemic? So he decided that not only is he going to practice his social distancing from the comfort of an abandoned theme park for a week, but he was also going to uncover the wildlife that Disney was supposedly hiding. More on that later. For months, Richard studied the area and mapped out his journey. And in the evening hours on April 27th, 2020, Richard began his recon. Making a trip around the Disney World parking lot and showing just how empty it truly was, describing the scene as a virtual ghost town. Richard's driving around, he's got his kayak on his roof, and he parks his car to go get a better look at the docks. Once he's done, he comes back and somebody steals his kayak. And even though this was his means of actually crossing the lake, he wasn't going to let that stop him. On his way back home, he stops at 7-Eleven, and he notices a guy with a canoe on his roof. It wasn't for sale, but that guy did have a shoddy aluminum boat that could be negotiated. I'm constructing a new trap right now. It's a deep water trap. I have reason to believe this animal that I'm after is not in fresh water anymore. It's always good to be a sportsman, never good to be an outlaw. Do your things right because Mother Nature is fragile. And if we all out there breaking the law and doing that thing the wrong ways, we're not gonna have any left. And it's as we see with the coronavirus, you know, mankind is absolutely ruling this world. Be a sportsman and not an outlaw. Two days later, he returns to the area, parking his van in a secluded area in the suburbs a few blocks from the park. Richard would then wait until nightfall to begin his journey towards the shore. In his inventory, a flashlight, a water bottle, scuba gear in case things go south, some tape, a car battery, his cell phone, and that small aluminum boat. So with the sun fully set and the plan fully in motion, he's ready to go. Richard dragged his boat about a mile out of the suburban neighborhood, through the wooded area, and across a long pipeline, taking breaks in between as the weather began to work against him. Another mile, mile and a half. 
Easy work. And that's when he notices the forested area he had been traveling through has eyes in the trees. Trail cams. These are auto trail cams to monitoring activity down these back trails that I'm taking right here. And I gotta track the boat by here. That's the first one I've seen, but I, there might have been more. Send some pictures direct. See the fire. Not good. I'm gonna put something over the front of this one. So he covers the camera and makes note to avoid these in the future, and carries on as he makes his way forward. Three hours pass. Tired and winded from dragging the boat, he comes to a barbed wire fence and has no choice but to lift his boat over it. And with that final push, he made it to the dock. Southern Pirate out. It's 4.25 in the morning. Still this raggedy boat I just bought, no wonder I got it at such a good price. It damn near sunk. So under the cover of night and bad weather, Rich ends up making it to Discovery Island, but not without trouble. Turns out the boat that he bought was damaged, and it started taking in a lot of water as he was crossing the lake. His boat almost sinks and his battery is underwater, so he ended up just taping up the holes and carrying on. This is Discovery Island, Walt Disney World. This is as dead as you're ever gonna see. There's not a soul in here other than cops and security guards. Anyway, let me get the hell out of this boat before it sinks completely. So with the worst behind him, he comes to a small abandoned building on the island and takes shelter for the night. Starting a small fire to dry off his boots, he waits until sunrise. Here I am, folks. Discovery Island. In a lake they call Bay Lake. It's a natural made lake by Mother Earth. It's full of alligators. There's been several deaths in this body of water. Walt Disney likes to brush stuff under the rug. They don't like to tell people. And this poor little kid got snatched out of this body of water right here. They try to tell their guests that there's no alligators here. I've been diving these waters since 2004 and I've seen more gators in this area than just about anywhere else I've ever seen them. So what he's referring to here is the tragic story of two-year-old Lane Graves who was building sandcastles on the Seven Seas Lagoon and got snatched up by an alligator. This would lead to Disney ramping up removal of the alligators on the park premises despite being previously aware of the problem. And yeah, there were a lot of them. Yeah, that's pretty sad that a place like Walt Disney lies to their guests about wildlife. You see, Richard had seen his fair share of wild animals, most notably the alligator snapping turtle, which he believed to be a modern day dinosaur. But he believed he could catch one on Discovery Island, prove that there's more to worry about than just gators. Of course, that was just scratching the surface of this hunt, and let me tell you, it's a lot fucking crazier than big turtles. I initially read about Richard's Adventure 2 battle on this Twitter thread, and here it states that Richard was hunting for some sort of genetically modified abomination that was hidden at the center of the island and it was funded by the US government. It was a whole thing. But I couldn't find anything of Richard actually talking about this directly outside of a few implications. That is until I wandered into the comments of his final entry in the series. According to Rich, there is quote, something on that island. Now supposedly after all of this is said and done, Richard was briefed by the Secret Service. I can't give credence to this claim because I don't know, but a reply to this gives some context. Supposedly, genetic research testing was done underground during off hours on the island funded by the US government. What better way to hide something than in plain sight? And a creature they'd been working on using birds had escaped and wreaked havoc. It cannot escape the island, but remains in a lair where it comes out at night. Supposedly, this thing can't leave the island due to its mechanical devices slash weight. Could be BS, but thought it was interesting. The creature that got out was part eagle, some say cockatoo, and part robot slash mechanical. They say it can kill someone in one swipe. What in the Oh. It's most likely to be total BS, like I said. And this rumor goes back a long, long time. It may not be alive now. The person who wrote about this to be cautious and not to go there, and that you have been warned. Have you found any more info? I, I can't find a rumor, a conspiracy, or, or anything. Supposedly, as you get close to the island and it starts to get dark, birds will start to screech to warn you not to get too close to the center of the island where this thing lives. It's part mechanical robot, part bird. Also explains why the police terminated their search for Mr. Pirate, pirate flag emoji, as it was getting dark. The local police must know something. Source. <laughs> um, I'm gonna need the source of that information that you sent because I might pay a visit to that thing with a freaking gun. It's a long way to say big robot bird dinosaur. I mean, could Disney really be housing a frankenfowl on their property? Well, let me ask you this. Did you know that the last dusky seaside sparrow died on Discovery Island? Extinct. Gone. I don't know. I'm just saying I'd like to see a minimum wage employee play Sneed Seed and Feed with a f***er that big. Anyway, now we have an idea of what Richard was possibly there for. Let's get it on. The sun has now risen over Discovery Island and Richard prepares for his week-long excursion. Virtually untouched by humans for over 21 years. And you can tell because there's no graffiti, 
This is the kind of places I like to find. was open. How many did they just turn loose? Cool. It's unreal. Unreal. It's unreal. Just left everything just like it was. The stuff that I've been doing my whole life, if y'all are into this, you know, like and subscribe so I can go and do more and bring y'all to places that y'all might not ever get to see. That's a massive tree right there. Look at that. Big cypress tree. And I don't touch anything. I don't break anything. I don't leave any trash. I pick up all my trash as I leave. All is going well so far. After inspecting the cages, he steps out into the open walkway, turns to his left, and... Foot paths are in here. Oh, great. I'm on game camera. Not good. I'm busted. That's the second one. I found the first two that I came in contact with and I got out of here. That one caught me first. After being extremely careful and mapping out all of the locations of the trail cameras, he got careless. I can get my bag just in case. And uh, the hunt was on. So naturally, Richard immediately turned tail, headed back to the abandoned building he was camped in, grabbed all of his belongings, and began planning his... Orange County Sheriff's Office, you're being recorded. This is Operator Moore. How may I help you? Hi, this is Lucy Walters, Home Security. Hi. Hi. I've got an investigator requesting a county uh, assist in response to Discovery Island. Do you have an address or? 4600 Fork Wilderness Trail. What's the name of it? Discovery Island. To say that Disney's reaction time was impressive would be an understatement. From the moment that trail cam flashed on my man Rich, they were on him like stink on shit. Someone was seen in an out of bounds area. Fighting of a person in a restricted area. Yes, so the person was seen on camera. He didn't give me a description. Are you all in route or are you there? Is it, they're in route. They have to get a boat to get to the island. Okay, well we'll send deputies out there. Thank you. Thank you, bye. A search party was formed to find the trespasser. Two sheriffs took a boat to the island, guns drawn, and they began to push forward until they realized just how big the island really was and decided to call for backup. Meanwhile, Richard treads carefully through the crunchy woods, then he begins to hear voices. Not like a schizophrenic episode, but literal voices coming from a chopper circling overhead. At this point, Rich figured if he hid really well, the cops would get tired and call out the search and go home. So he decided to bury himself under a bunch of leaves as the sound of boats and choppers got louder and louder. These motherfuckers are crazy. Disney World's got all that money. They can do whatever they want. Just going around and around circles, circling the island. These motherfuckers aren't playing. Crossing, okay? Yeah. Door will open your side, hot side your door. You ready? Change shirts, come on, your hands up, do it now. Man, this is really, really fucking weird right now. This is, I'm stranded on Discovery Island. What is this, what they hatch baby dinosaurs in? behind me. Yeah. Watch out, there's something to step on. Okay. Police officers and island guards were circling the island. Not only that, but they located his boat and his provisions and confiscated them to entice Richard to come out of hiding. Thirsty and running out of options, he begins to drink the rainwater pooling on the leaves. Then he realizes he needs to come up with an escape plan. This man then goes naked snake mode and progresses through the woods, stopping every so often to listen for his pursuers. This whole game of cat and mouse lasted for roughly four hours. Then the survival instincts kick in. He heads to the beach, he looks for some water bottles because the plan is to make a flotation device. As long as you can't squeeze it, it means it still holds air. I gotta get a move on. I'm so thirsty. Oh, it's the best water I've ever drank in my life. Mm, I'm not gonna drink that Mountain Dew there. It's a little rough. With enough bottles to float to shore, he stuffs his backpack with them, ensuring that they'll float. And then, it's time. 
Richard had been diving his whole life, so he's no stranger to muddy waters, but remember, Bay Lake is filled with thousands of gators, so if he wanted to make it back in one piece, he had to be quick. The flotation device didn't go as planned. Tired as hell, he had to keep pushing. One hour later, he reaches land. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Nobody's ever gonna believe what happened to me today. Thank God. Upon making it to shore, Rich takes a moment, you know, he catches his breath, and he decides to call his girlfriend to let her know that he's there. I just made the swim. Hey, I love you. What do you mean they... And that's when he receives the unfortunate news that shakes him harder than the cold murky waters of Bay Lake. They're gonna take you to jail if I don't come out and turn myself in. Just when he was celebrating his great escape, thinking he made it off the island scot-free. It turns out, not only did law enforcement have his boat and his supplies, but they also had his girlfriend and their van in their possession. The deal? Turn himself in and they'll let her go. Can they do that? Is that allowed? I'm not a part of it. I hear you. I so. want them, but not that much. All right, Richard, unfortunately, you're going to be placed under arrest for trespassing, okay? So that's exactly what he did. After getting his boat back from the sheriffs, he went to meet with the local police officers on the shore. His journey had finally come to its bittersweet conclusion. In the end, after all his preparations and the long journey just to get to the island, his week-long vacation was cut short. Richard was arrested for trespassing, but later entered a plea deal where he only had to pay a $100 fine. And the cherry on top? He received a lifetime ban from Disney World. I don't think he was planning on going back. 